Uh, now we're going to go over real quick how to set up your document camera. This is just the basics, but I think it'll give you a good idea. Right now we're going to start off with your typical USB powered document camera. We're going to use the hover cam as an example. To set it up, there's one USB port in the back. You're going to plug your USB cord into this. You plug it into your computer. That's it. <laughs> You're going to have software that'll have to be installed on the computer. That software is going to run the camera. Once it's plugged in, in this case, you're going to open it up. Now you can see whatever's below. So the USB cameras are the easiest to set up. You're going to have to use the software to control it. So you'll want to get in there, use the software, learn where everything is and what it does. But in general, they're very easy to use. Next, we're going to go up to a typical VGA port setup. I'm going to use this Lumens DC265 as an example of that. You got a couple ways you can set this up. First, we're going to go VGA directly into a projector. Now, on the back side of the camera, most of them it'll be in the back, but it will vary by camera. You have your VGA out. That's right there. You'll plug your cable into that. You'll go into your projector, maybe even a TV. And you're going to directly display the image that's coming from this camera. That's why these types of cameras have controls right there because you're going to use the buttons on the camera to zoom in, zoom out, freeze frame, split screen, do all that really nifty stuff. That's your basic setup for one of these. Another way to hook it up is most of these types of cameras will have a USB connection and you can connect that to your computer. So you'll, obviously you'll have to plug it in for power, Have your power input right there. Uh, but you can use the USB port, which in this camera is on the side. And you can run a USB cable back to your computer, and then the, with the included software, you'll be able to see the image coming from the camera. Now, the last way you can set up a camera like this is if you have a VGA pass-through. VGA pass-through is a VGA input, <clears throat> and then in this case, this port actually says VGA pass-through on it, but in others it'll just say VGA out. What that means is you can connect this to the same projector that your computer is connected to, and you can switch between the camera and the computer and use them exclusively, but not together. So the way you do that is you're gonna run a VGA output from your computer into the input on the projector. Then you're gonna run another VGA cable from your output or pass-through port and run that up to the input port on your projector. Now you'll be able to project your computer screen just like you do. You may do that right now, that's not going to change. But when you walk up to your camera, there'll be a button on there. Uh, on some cameras it might have a picture of the document camera, on others it might say camera or something like that. But you basically hit that button and the device inside the camera itself will switch and now the projector is picking up the image from the camera. And then you'd go about controlling the camera from the camera as you would if it were directly connected to your projector. In a lot of ways, this is easier to set up in, an, in a classroom where you have an existing ceiling mounted projector. You know, you can just plug it right in there between your computer and the projector and use it, or you can connect directly to the computer and use it that way. Last thing we're gonna touch upon here is digital outputs. Now, a lot of these uh, document cameras nowadays do come with digital outputs so you can connect directly to a high-def projector or a high-def TV. If you had an LCD or plasma TV in your room, you can plug directly into there. An example is this Avermedia camera. You have your DVI output, so you can plug directly from the camera into the TV and then control the camera from the camera. Uh, you can also, uh, back to the Lumens camera, you can also have uh, HDMI outputs, as you see right there. So you can use an HDMI port to plug in. What's the difference? Uh, DVI is video, HDMI is video and audio. This particular camera can record audio and video right to it. So you'd be able to output that audio along with the video to the TV and have the sound come from there. So that could be an advantage if you're in that particular situation. Either way, you'd be able to output in 1080p, in high def, maybe even 720p, depends on the camera, 
but that's going to give you the highest resolution possible.